<clears throat> okay, so in this video, we're going to look at the concept of constrained optimization using Lagrange multipliers. Um, basically, what we've looked at so far in the previous two videos are local maximum minimum, and then we've looked at absolute maximum minimum of, or absolute maximum and minimum values of functions. Now we're going to introduce the idea where um, you have some function f of x, y, z, and you want to find the maximum or minimum values of this function subject to um, subject to another function let's say we call it g x y z which is equal to some constant k okay um, we of course assume that um, gradient of g is not equal to the zero vector on the surface and g x y z is equal to k and on the surface g x y z is equal to k so as keeping those assumptions in mind so what we're assuming is that here we're assuming that the so we're assuming gradient of g is not the zero vector because if it is then there there is no real uh, you know the constraints won't have any effect now um, so to how we actually calculate this is by setting up um, an equation and that equation basically uh, connects these two uh, functions here this function and this relationship here this function here so that relationship is basically the gradient of f, x, y, z, okay, and it's equal to this lambda, okay, which is a parameter, g of x, y, z. Now this lambda here is called the Lagrange multiplier. That you'll see in the title. It's called the Lagrange multiplier. And you will see what it's actually, its role is quite simple. What it's doing is it's connecting these, um, uh, these two uh, functions, the function f, which is the objective function, which you want to find the maximum or minimum value of, and this is the constraint, subject to this constraint. So this Lagrange multiplier helps to, helps to set up an equation which basically uh, encompasses the entire relationship. So you want to you, the max min subject to the constraint. Now, in addition to this, of course, don't forget that we have the, um, we cannot ignore this important relationship, the actual constraint itself. So the idea here is that using these um, relationships, we will get a set of equations, as I'll show you now. And we have to simultaneously, simultaneously solve those equations um, to get uh, to what is our maximum or minimum value. So now, what I mean by getting these equations is if you look at, if we look at this in more detail, this is a vector equation. A vector equation means it's got, it's in component form. So the components of grad f would be, as you clearly would know, would be fx, fy, and fz. And that's going to be equal to lambda times, similarly, gx, gy, and gz. Now we know from basic vector, um, basic vectors that two vectors, if they are equal, uh, it means all their components are equal. So this implies that we get fx must be equal to gx, lambda times gx, fy must be equal to lambda times gy, and fz must be equal to lambda times gz. Okay. Now, don't forget that we all also have in addition to this that g is equal to k. So now we've got, you know, here four equations and we're looking for four unknowns. We're looking for we're looking for x, y, z, and lambda. So this is what we need to this is what we need to find. Alright? And if we can find these, it should hopefully help us to calculate what the maximum and minimum values are of f subject to the constraint g. Best thing to do is to look at an example, which we'll do now. So if you remember, we've already done this question before and um, in when we did uh, local maximum minimum as a, an application example. It's interesting to see uh, how we can actually use Lagrange multipliers to solve the same problem. Now, if you remember, of course, in this case, we are talking about a box which doesn't have a lid. So um, this means that the volume uh, the volume of any such box would be, of course, if the di dimensions are x, y, and z, 
then of course so the volume of such a box would be x y z v is equal to x y z okay and your constraint here g would be uh, basically so if you remember uh, from the previous case otherwise I'll just quickly uh, draw it for you here so this is our situation we're looking at a, a box okay so we're looking at if you look at here what we're looking at is a box as you can see here and the dimensions we're looking at are for instance in this case for instance X and this is Y and this is our Z so in this case um, if you look at this we have we have no lid so essentially you're looking at um, uh, there's two of these there's two of these sides so that's going to be 2xz okay let's just okay so it's 2 2xz okay plus we have then two of these sides this one and on this side okay so that's going to be yz so that's going to give us 2yz plus and there's only one of these xy's so if you see this uh, bottom one there's no top so there's just one xy so we end up with uh, this and this should be equal to this is the total surface area of the box all the sides counted and of course we're going to cut them out of 12 uh, meters squared of uh, uh, tin foil so that all the surface area should add up to 12 now you remember this from previous but if you don't or you haven't seen that previous video it doesn't matter I've just explained to you how we got this so this is our constraint now let's proceed with the uh, procedure outlined here it would mean the first thing we'd want to do is calculate um, so we'll go directly instead of calculating grad F uh, or grad V in this case we will go directly to a set of equations that we will have so those equations are going to be vx is equal to lambda gx okay and then we'll have vy is lambda gy and we have vz is equal to lambda gz okay so let's now look at how we would go about calculate these and actually look at our equations so the first equation here vx will give us yz and lambda times gx uh, gx remember so the gx is going to be okay 2z plus y okay the next equation vy equals lambda gy is going to give us xz equals lambda times 2z plus x okay and the third equation vz uh, v with respect to z is going to give us xy here and it's going to be lambda times um, lambda times 2x plus 2y so 2x plus 2y so those are um, these equations um, and of course don't forget we also have the, the constraint okay so let's label these as 1, 2, 3, and 4. So these are our four equations, and we want to solve it. So we'll now here at this point, I can't really advise you because simultaneously solving equations that are linear or nonlinear, the problem is when they're nonlinear, it becomes even more difficult and it requires you to study the equations and try to see if you can find some uh, little trick that might sort things out now in this case a, tr a very nice little trick works because if you look at the first equation if I multiply the first equation by X I'm gonna get so if I'm gonna multiply the first equation by X I'm gonna get XYZ equals lambda times take the X inside so you're gonna get 2XZ plus XY right in the same way if I multiply the second equation I think you'll realize what I'm doing by Y I'm gonna get again XYZ and that's equal to lambda times 2yz plus xy and if I multiply the third equation by z this time I'm gonna get xyz is equal to lambda times 2xz plus um, 2yz 
right? So now if you look at this, what is what is interesting about this relationship is that these, uh, let's call this equation 5, 6, and 7. Now 5, 6, and 7 um, are basically have the same left-hand sides, have the same um, uh, left-hand sides. Before we go to, uh, one important thing is here, you will notice that lambda, lambda cannot be 0. Why? Let's study that. Lambda cannot be 0 because if lambda is 0, okay, uh, lambda equals zero would imply if lambda were equal to zero, this would imply this this implies that from one two three, okay, the original equations, right? From one two three, uh, clearly y z is equal to zero, and x z is equal to zero, and x y is equal to zero. Which means what? Which means that x y and z are actually going to be um, equal to zero. So that is not uh, going to give us anything. So this cannot happen. So therefore, lambda, therefore, lambda cannot be zero, number one. Now, if lambda cannot be zero, now we can start taking advantage of the fact that if I take any two of these equations, I can start to equate them. So from five and six, from five and six, um, I'm going to get lambda times 2xz plus xy is equal to lambda times 2yz plus xy. Now, clearly, these two lambdas will cancel. Okay, and I'm left with 2xz plus xy equals 2yz plus xy, which means essentially that what I have, xz is equal to yz. Okay, because the xy's will cancel from both sides. All right. And what will be left then, so what I'm saying is next step, x, y, and x, y will cancel. And that will leave you these, these twos will also cancel. And all you'll be left with is the x, z equals the y, z. So now, if x, z is equal to y, z, then now remember, if z equal to 0 or x equal to 0, I mean, if z is equal to 0, we'll have a problem. What? because the volume will be zero, and that doesn't make any sense. So z cannot be zero, okay, because of practical reasons, because it will just not, um, it's, it'll, it'll give us nothing, actually. So this means, this implies, therefore, x must be equal to y, and that's a conclusion. That's important. Let's note that. So x is going to be equal, x has to be equal to y for us to get an actual box with a proper finite volume. Okay, from the next equation, from the next two equations, we're going to get, um, in a similar way, 2yz plus xy. So 2yz plus xy, that's from 6, uh, is equal to 2xz plus 2yz. Okay, and from that, we can clearly see that um, the 2yz and the 2yz will cancel here and here. And so you'll be left with just um, xy is equal to 2xz, okay? xy is equal to 2xz. Now, uh, since x cannot be 0, x cannot be 0 because it will end up giving us a volume of 0. So x cannot be 0, otherwise there's no box. So since x cannot be 0, uh, it means that y must be equal to 2z. Okay, and I'll box that because that's also an important result. And of course, uh, keep in mind that we already know x is equal to y. So therefore, therefore, x is equal to y is equal to 2z. So we get that. Now, uh, if we were to substitute this, uh, th this into our uh, equation 4. So if we substitute this, so sub in 4, this gives us 4z squared plus 4z squared plus 4z squared is equal to 12, okay? So that means, uh, that essentially means that z squared is equal to 1, which implies z is equal to 1. Now, we cannot say 
z cannot be minus 1 because this is a dimension and dimensions cannot be negative. So therefore, we get z is equal to 1. And z is equal to 1 means x is equal to y is equal to 2. So therefore, our dimensions are 2, 2, and 1. And this will maximize the volume subject to the constraint. Here's another example. We want to maximize or find the maximum value Maximum minimum values of f x y equals x squared plus 2 y squared subject to the constraint um, x squared plus y squared equals 1, which means on the circle, essentially. So in order to solve this, we'll proceed the same way. Uh, once again, in this case, we are assuming that g, okay, and we have only g of x y this time. So g x y is equal to 1, and of course f x y is x squared plus 2 y squared. So let g x y equal to that. So again, uh, we're going to be doing this, fx equals lambda gx, um, fy equals lambda gy, and gxy is equal to 1. So those are our three equations. So fx will give us 2x is equal to lambda times, uh, lambda times 2x, and then we'll get from this uh, 4y, okay, fy, and lambda times uh, 2y. Okay, and the third equation is x squared plus y squared equals 1. Now, uh, from, uh, so let's say we'll call this 1, 2, and 3. These are new 1, 2, and 3 equations. This one implies from 1 we can see that um, we end up with 2x into uh, lambda minus 1 equals 0. So this means x equals 0 or lambda equals 1. So if x is equal to 0 from 3, we can see that y is equal to plus or minus 1. Okay, now, fair enough, um, that's fine. So what else? If lambda is 1, clearly if lambda is equal to 1, then this implies clearly y is equal to 0. Okay, because if you look at this one here, this implies, number 2, equation 2 implies that um, if you take the 2y outside, you'll get lambda minus 2 equals 0. So if lambda is equal to 1, this means y must be equal to 0. Okay, so y must be equal to 0. Uh, so then, then x must be plus minus 1 okay, from 3, okay? So these are the various scenarios. So therefore, f has possible extreme values at either 0, 1, okay, 0, minus 1, and possibly at 1, 0, and minus 1, 0. So all the possible combinations here. So this one clearly, as you can see, will give us um, uh, x is 0 uh, and 1. So these two, as you can see, these two come from that, and these two come from this one here, okay? So those are our four possibilities, and of course the way to calculate is now simply we substitute each value back into the original function f0, 1 is equal to 2, f0 minus 1 is equal to 2, f1, 0, is equal to 1 and f minus 1 0 is also equal to 1. So therefore the maximum value of f on the circle x squared plus y squared equals 1 is um, f 0 plus minus 1 which is equal to 2. Okay so that's the maximum value and uh, so that's your max okay and your min is f plus minus 1 0 which is equal to so that's our min in this case, subject to the constraint. So that's basically that solution.